Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato, and today's Everything Music. It's What Makes This Song Great, episode 57. The band is Genesis, and the song is Dance on a Volcano. It's coming up next. <laughs> Dance on a Volcano was the opening track on Trick of the Tail by Genesis, which was released in the early part of 1976. The record was produced by David Henschel and Genesis, and it's the first album that features Phil Collins on lead vocals. So the band at that time was Phil Collins, Steve Hackett, Mike Rutherford, and Tony Banks. Now this record has amazing songs on it. Not just that, Entangled, which is one of my favorite songs, Squonk. Ripples. I mean, just incredible songwriting. But this track has some really interesting odd times, and it's a really great example of 70s progressive rock. And I want to talk a lot about these meter changes and the type of harmonic structures or chord progressions that are used in addition to the uh, talking about the melody. So let's get into the beginning of the song. Okay, so the song opens with the 12 string riff that goes like this. And then we're into our first odd time section. So it starts with this, which really is a D Lydian. Then the electric guitar comes in on the da 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 da. Now that is an 1116 bar. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Let's talk about the electric guitar part. Now let's check out the 12 string part from the top. Now I put a capo at the third fret because it sounds like he's droning off an open string. In this case, the third fret with the capo. So let's check it out from the top. Let's talk about this part for a second. So you've got da 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 da. That's a eleven sixteen part, and then it goes. Then it goes back to the da 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 da. da. And then um, that is the next main figure until it goes. The main riff that comes next, which is actually the chorus riff, goes like this. Uh. And that's another part that's in seven. Let's talk about the chord progression in the introduction here. So if you add the picking parts together, along with the Taurus bass pedals, it's playing the bass part here. It starts with the D Lydian, right? Da, 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 da. Then it goes into a D minor 11 chord. And then... Da, 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 da. Then it goes into a, a G half diminished chord with a flat 5 in the bass over, over D flat. And then it goes down to uh, C7 sus4. So I, I'm thinking like... And then it goes up to B flat. 
adds that A in there. Which gives you that F major over B flat sound, that Genesis chord, right? And then it gets into the main melody riff, that. So it's like a B flat, uh, sus to, down to the F major over B flat, then to F minor over A flat, and then E flat major, back to A flat major. Okay, next we get to the mixed meter, meaning different time signatures back to back, and odd meter section. The odd meter would be the 1116 bars that we have here in the intro. Let's talk about these and I'll show you how to count them. Okay, so the tune starts out with a bar of 4-4 four, four, and then a bar of 2-4, or you could really say it's a bar of 6-4, right? But I think it's easier just to go 4-4, four, 2-4, four, four, and then 1116. The 1116 is followed by two bars of 4-4, four, four, then another bar of 1116. Okay, let me talk about counting the 1116. So it'd be like this. One E and a two E and a one, two, three, uh, okay, so that's really 11 16th notes. One E and a two E and a, that's eight, and then one, two, three, uh, or three E and, you could say. One E and a two E and a three E and, uh, and then we're back to one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One E and a two E and a one, two, three, one. Let me count along with the track. Check it out. Here we go. One, two, three, four, one, two. One E and a two E and a three and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One E and a two E and a one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One E and two E and a three E and uh. It's hard to count and breathe. And this is in seven eight here. It goes back into four four right here. It's a little tricky to count because it's not perfectly it's not played to a grid or anything they're playing it live check it out one two three four two two three four one two three four one two this next section i like to count with three bars of seven eight and then go into a seven four with an accent even though you can count it all in seven eight check it out two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven Two, three, four, five, six, seven. One and two and three and four and five, six, seven. One and two and three and four and five, six, seven. One and two and three and four and five, six, seven. One and two and three and four and five, six, seven. Okay, so I think of that more in seven, four. It seems to make more sense logically with one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, where that kick, the crash is there. One, two, three, four, and five, six, seven. There's a distorted electric part that Steve Hackett plays. I'm pretty sure I'm a Les Paul that goes along with the section that also provides the harmony part to that. Da, 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 da. Does a climbing thing. Check it out. I'll play along with it. Comes in right here. Harmony. And then it goes into the verse section. Next, we have the verse part where the vocals enter. Now, there's a lot of really interesting things that happen here. I want to break it down like this. Let's talk about the chord progression first because it's over a pedal point. The guitar is going, guitars and bass. Da -do -da -do -da -da -do -da -do -da and it's based off of a B flat pedal. And there's this airy choir pad that happens that Tony Banks is playing over that. And it's a very genesis type progression start so it starts with b flat minor and then a flat over b flat and then e flat over b flat and then g flat over b flat back to b flat minor a flat over b flat e flat over b flat G flat over B flat, and then here's the Genesis chord. F major over B flat. That's a B flat major nine with no third. That's really a F major over B flat 
is that real Genesis sound that you hear. When you hear the G flat going to, to F major, moving down a half step. Better start doing it right. And then it goes back to the da, 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 da. Okay, so that's the chord progression. Now the guitar and bass riff goes like this. That's your pedal point. It's just the same repeated pattern in seven, okay? That goes over the, those chords that we talked about. Now, if I were to play those chords, I'm gonna turn off my distortion. By the way, uh, the distortion pedal I'm using for this, I'm not endorsed, but I'm using this Jetter Monster distortion, which I really like. I'm just using it with a clean sound, a little Vox amp, and uh, using this for my distortion. It's, uh, it has two different distortions that you can cascade, which I like. For a point of reference, if you were to play those same chord voicings on guitar that I just played on the keyboard, it's B flat minor, A flat over B flat, and then E flat over B flat, G flat over B flat, and then the Genesis chord, F over B flat. So that's what that would sound like on the guitar. That's how to get those Genesis chords. Next, let's talk about the drum beat. All right, the drum part in the verse is kind of tricky because there's a snare hit that happens with an open hi-hat that happens on the end of six and it closes on seven. It's in seven, eight. Let me show you where it is. Check this out. Right here. Four, five, six, seven. Okay. The thing that makes it tricky is that the hi hat, the open hi hat, happens on right with the snare, but it sucks down on the last eighth note, uh, on the seventh eighth note of the measure there. So that's that's what makes that tricky. It's a really clever drum beat. Very very hip. Before we go on, I want to say something about the melody of the song. I'm just going to make a generalization, and it's really a generalization about Phil Collins' melodies. He's an incredibly good melody writer. They're rhythmically interesting, which makes sense. He's a drummer. And he always sings great notes over the chords, a lot of chord tone-based melodies. Anytime that there's a suspension, he knows what to do. He'll sing dissonances. If you go to the next song on the record, Entangled, there's a spot where it's an E over G sharp chord and he's harmonizing. He sings an A and F sharp in the lead, in the melody together over this G sharp and there's a flat nine. He just hears the really great notes to go to. And this is a textbook melody I'm, that I'm not really even go going to address because it's all the right notes in the right spot. This is really the reason that Phil Collins had so many big hits over the years, starting from the mid 70s all the way into the 90s. There's a natural tension that's built up there before you hit the chorus at the end of the verse when you're coming from the G flat over B flat, which is the first inversion G flat major chord, right? to the F over B flat chord. Now the F over B flat has a dissonant major seventh interval there. That's what makes the tension happen when it's going. Uh, when that's happening over that chord, it makes it really tense. Better start doing it right. And then we're right back to the chorus melody, this part. Let's check out the drum fill leading into the chorus. Right here. I love he does that last flourish at the very end of the fill. Check it out again. And he's so dead on with it. Phil Collins was an amazing drummer, incredibly great drummer. People that don't know Genesis don't realize, I mean, this, this kind of progressive rock drumming is very similar to fusion. People like Billy Cobham, things like that. Uh, this is really sophisticated stuff. Okay, so then we're into the chorus here. 
So it goes through. Same thing with the harmony part. And then we're back in right here. Next verse. Okay, so we move on past the second verse and we get to the second chorus. Now remember, I always say this, there's no Pro Tools here. There's no anything. There's no click track. They're just playing the stuff. Sure, there's overdubs going on, but the basic rhythm tracks are all played down. You know, that, that's why it's has so much feel to it. Great fill there. I love that triplet there. And then... This is our little transition. Now this transition modulates that lick to a different key. Let's check it out. So this interlude. So that starts on B and it's a, like a B Lydian. So it does this. There's a sharp four, there's your Lydian sound and then it's F sharp minor over over uh, B or a B six uh, B six chord, and then it goes C sharp sus to this C uh, C sharp nine chord. Okay, it's or it's really F sharp minor over C sharp. Okay, and then we're into this next tr transition. This next section has a similar accent pattern of the verse, but the way that the hi-hat's played, it sounds like the accent actually happens when the hi-hat closes, which is on seven. Check it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 Now, they didn't have arpeggiators back then. I don't think they did. So the, all these licks like this, these repeated patterns like this, are actually played by Tony Banks. So they would just simply play them instead of using a sequencer, right? So the bridge begins with a really cool pick drag that's probably played by Steve Hackett. Check it out. Right here. And then it goes, it changes from the from the E to this B7 lick, right? Uh, C, it's a sequencer style lick. B, F sharp, A, B, and then D sharp. There's your whole B7 uh, chord, right? So. And it does that. Um, da, 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 and then it goes to E7. It goes back to the transition lick, which would be... Um, it goes up to that uh, D, which makes it an E7, right? So you've got that that sound. So you're really going from B7 to E7 during this transition. Check it out. Left, 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 right. B7. B7. Out of the night, and out of Back to B7. Into the the drumming in this section is incredibly cool. Let's check it out again. Right here. That kick it comes in that sixteenth note after. Love that. And that crash. Awesome. So the next transition lick here. Uh, goes B, F sharp, A, C. So you get that, this kind of chord. If you invert it, 
You, there's a diminished chord in there, so you've got C, F sharp, and A, or F sharp, A, C, and then you have that B is that tension note. So it's a diminished with an 11th in it, but it's inverted, so. So that's that lick, okay? And then it has this great buildup with the drum fill. Well. And it goes back to that lick. Da, da. Love this. And then we get this sequence lick here. Okay, it's got a sequencing down the scale. Listen. Then back to the chorus. Love it. Love it. And then back to the verse. Okay, let's talk about this lick. So this next double time section has a tra uh, transposing, half step down transposing thing going on. Check it out. It's actually part of a whole tone scale. So it's like a... And the, and the guitar, Steve Hackett's guitar is going... Uh, check it out. Up there. Then. Then it goes down to half. That's going to modulate down another half step. Then. Then. So you have this, um, we have this, that type of like, uh, that, that happens during this part. So it's, it's really, it's kind of, it's hard to do with one guitar, right? Cause it's a, and then we're back to this. Next, we have the Phrygian part where it's going da, 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 between C sharp and D, like a Phrygian. Let's check it out. Then a C triad. Tony Banks. Okay, so I figure this is as good a place as any, right after Tony's really fast run there, to talk about what kind of keyboards he was using at the time. So I did some research, found an article from Keyboard Magazine from 1976, the year the record came out. And one of the questions is, what keyboards are you using now? So this should give you a good idea, right? And he says, Hammond Model T Oregon, I use an RMI electric piano, which I run through an MXR Phase 100 and a Fender Blender fuzz box. I use a Mellotron, a small 400 on stage. I have tapes with strings, brass, and voices. He's probably using the voices in this, uh, in the pad part that you're hearing early on. That's because of the particular lines in the set we're doing now. On the albums, I use any tones I can get a hold of. 
The other instrument is an Art Pro Soloist, which I have stuck with on stage for about three years. Tony also ran a lot of his instruments through Echoplexes, like everybody did. Every guitar player, everybody used Echoplexes back then. And he would also like to run his ARP and Mellotron through a Leslie cabinet, which was also a common thing for everybody to do. A lot of guitar players used Leslie cabinets back in the 70s. These were ways to alter the sound so that they would sound more interesting and give it modulation, give it movement. Then back to the C triad. Then the ending riff right here. Then it's A minor. Then it ends on an open G chord. That's definitely the most complicated song I've done in any of these What Makes This Song Great. I think the only one that's this difficult that I've done is Kid Charlemagne and Tool, maybe to a lesser extent, but it's not as complex as far as the time changes as this has with all the weird... Uh, all the odd accents and those 1116 parts and the and some of those really cool 7 8 uh, things where he's doing that that those hits on the and of of six really amazing amazing song I love this record check out entangled that's the next song after this I considered doing that but I wanted to get something that was really quintessential Genesis the kind of chord progressions they use and and the kind of crazy complexity that's all for now please subscribe here to my everything music youtube channel if you're interested in the beato book go to my website at www.rickbeato.com and if you want to support the channel even more check out the beato club you can find out more about it on my website as well thanks so much for watching